Jen, I see you now. Okay, Jimmy, go ahead. Okay, for for the Pledge of Allegiance, we'll go to Gab. Yay. Guys, I never heard the Pledge of Allegiance. Wait, give me a minute, I forgot it. Okay, got it now. Hands up. I pledge of allegiance to the it stands one nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all to the scout law will go to Tristan okay just a second Christian and Cedric, yeah, you can turn off your cam. Go ahead. Thank you, sir. The scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, lean, and reverent, too. For for scout of a look to Max. Time's up. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. Too. Okay, thank you guys. This meeting today, is gonna take about one hour to one hour and 10 minutes. And we're recording it so that if people miss it, they can watch it on YouTube. It'll be like most of the other meetings we have, the videos may be a little bit jerky or laggy to you. My apologies. All right, let's start with slide one. Now, for you guys that were Cub Scouts, most of this is the same class that you had before, but it's been altered so that we meet all the required requirements for the Boy Scout shooting merit badge, rifle shooting merit badge. Now, you should have your worksheet with you. And as I go down through this, you'll see in red on the slides, it will tell you what page and what question. I'm talking about. So you should be able to complete about half of your workbook while we're doing this today. You, Because I'm not gonna wait on every slide for you to write stuff down, you may have to go back and rewatch the video to complete the answers. And then you guys are gonna need to, and the reason we're doing this is you guys are so slow sometimes submitting your paperwork. There's six pages that you're gonna to need to fill out today. And when we did traffic merit badge, it took forever for you guys to send the stuff in. So you're gonna fill out the worksheet. You're gonna either scan it or take a photo of it and send it to me. And then you can pick the time that you're going to shoot Right now we're scheduled to shoot on 14 and 21 August. But we did that schedule before all of these new lockdowns came for Manila and Angeles. So those days for actual shooting may get delayed. And we'll let you know as soon as we have better information. All right, back to the slide. Why are we doing this? We're doing this because people love to shoot. It also will allow you to earn your rifle shooting merit badge. It builds confidence, self-reliance. It gives you more conservation awareness and it helps you learn safe and responsible use of guns.
what we'll be discussing today. We'll be talking about safety, parts of the rifle, the local laws of using and owning a handgun, excuse me, a gun, also hunting. We'll talk about selecting a gun to buy. We'll be talking about hygiene and shooting. We'll briefly talk about cleaning a BB gun, shooting activities available, and how to shoot from the bench. Now, we're only going to shoot one position, and that's off a bench. So it'll be fairly easy for you guys to qualify. We'll also talk about adjusting sights and sight picture. What gun are we going to use? We'll be using the same gun that we used at the Scout Summer Camp. It's called a Daisy Red Rider. It's a little bit of a small weapon, so it will be about the right size for most of you. The BSA allows three different weapons to qualify for the shooting rifle shooting merit badge. The gun that we're going to use, which is a BB gun, a muzzle loading rifle, or a rifle that shoots actual bullets. Let's watch a quick video of what the Daisy Red Rider BB gun looks like. You guys see the red writing there? That's telling you where to write this answer in your workbook. If you didn't print your workbook, you're going to have to rewatch the video again next week. So workbook page nine, letter D, just a second. Sorry, I was coaching my scout. Okay, there's two types of BB guns. There's the BB gun that we're going to use. It shoots a round BB, cylindrical. And then there's a pellet gun, which shoots a different kind of projectile. It's not round like the BB. It's like a cylinder. And the pellet gun shoots at a higher feet per second rate. It's more dangerous. The BB gun is very dangerous also. Now this is another one. This is on page one, question 1A. The BB gun is very dangerous. It probably won't kill someone, but it certainly can put an eye out. And that's kind of a joke, but it's not a joke if you have an eye put out. The advantages of using air rifles is it's low in cost, it doesn't have a lot of noise, it has little recoil, recoil is when it pushes back on your shoulder, and you only need a short distance for your firing range. 
for example, the firing range that we'll be using for you guys to qualify will be 15 feet long. Next slide, please. Again, this is in your workbook, page one, question 1B. How would you react if a friend is visiting and he asks to see your family's guns? You really probably shouldn't have, first of all, your guns should be secured and locked up and they should not be loaded when they're in storage. And if your friend has no business um, with the weapons, you probably should tell him that you need your dad's permission or you're not sure how to unlock the cabinet, but you probably shouldn't be having someone look at the family's guns without the permission of your parents. Next slide, please. Again, this is on workbook one, question one C. Personal safety you need to use. Because we're shooting a BB gun, you won't need earmuffs or earplugs because the BB gun doesn't have very much noise. You will need to have safety glasses in case a BB bounces back from the backstop and it doesn't hurt your eyes. Next slide. All right, guys, this is on your workbook, page two. And you, you don't need to write all of this out. You can just write down enough so that I understand it when you submit it to me. Then the US on owning weapons. You can own an airsoft or a BB gun without having a license and they don't have to be registered. Now we'll look at in a second, we'll look at owning a regular rifle that shoots bullets. It's much more complicated. Our requirements for owning a weapon that shoots real bullets. You're going to need to get a psychiatric clearance. You're gonna to need to get a drug test clearance. You're gonna to have to attend a gun safety and responsible gun ownership seminar and get a certificate to submit with your package. You're gonna to have to get a clearance from the NBI that you're not a criminal. You're gonna to have to have a copy of your birth certificate or your unexpired passport. You're gonna to have to have proof of billing where you live, like your electric bill or registration of your car. You're gonna to have to have two valid IDs and seven pictures pieces of two by two picture. So you can see that the ownership of a real weapon, a pistol or a rifle in the Philippines is difficult at best, but to their advantage, it doesn't, we don't have the problems in the Philippines with all of the gun violence that they have in a place like the States. At the estimated cost, just to get permission to buy a weapon. And the weapon is gonna cost several thousand more pesos after you've done this. I'm not gonna go down through and read all of these items, but for example, a drug test is 300, NBI clearance is 165, et cetera. And the total estimated total, this was a year ago, is about 3,845 pesos. So let's round that off. It costs about 4,000 pesos just to get a permit to buy a weapon. So for the folks that have a lot of weapons, 
they spent a lot of money just to get permission to buy the weapons. Hunting laws in the Philippines. This is on your workbook, page two, question F1 and F2. There is no hunting of animals in the Philippines. That's your answer. There is no hunting of animals in the Philippines. Next slide. Just a second. Okay, sorry, our slides are a little bit slow. What's next? By saying what's next, what's next after this, after you earn your merit badge, if you wanna shoot more, you can join an organization called National Rifle Association, and you can join that from here. I'm not sure how much the membership is. The problem you'll have in the States, there's a lot of shooting programs for youth but here, I don't believe there's any or very limited shooting programs for young people. Now, if you do want to shoot more, you can go to the Mountain View gun range. It's a little bit expensive there, and it won't be air rifles. It'll be weapons that shoot actual bullets. Does anybody else know of any other places you can go to shoot? All right. now. That's in your workbook, page three, question G. Next slide. All right, after firing, the things you're gonna to need to do is clean the rifle range. There's no eating or drinking while you're shooting. You'll need to clean the weapon and you'll need to clean yourself because the weapons should have oil on them and you're gonna get oil on your skin. In the case of shooting, while we're in this pandemic, we're gonna to have to wipe down the weapons as one person finishes shooting and we let someone else use the same weapon so you don't pick up any COVID where someone's cheek was on the weapon. It's pretty easy to clean a BB gun. When you get done shooting it, you're gonna wipe it down with a cloth and get any water or dirt off the weapon. And then you might want to lightly oil the metal parts of the weapon so that when you put it in storage, it doesn't rust. And there's also on these guns that we're gonna use, there's a little hole on it where you can put a couple of drops of oil in so that it lubricates the parts on the inside of the weapon. Next slide, please. Parts of a rifle. This one will take you a few minutes to complete. This is on page eight, option B, which covers air rifles. I'm not gonna try to go through all of the parts. On the top picture, you can see the stock is that wooden piece that goes against your shoulder. The action is the part of the weapon where you actually put the BB or bullet in. And the barrel is that long pipe that when you shoot the weapon, the projectile travels down the barrel or that long pipe on its way to the target. And if we look down at the bottom, photo. This one's going to help you with filling out your workbook. It goes ahead and breaks down the major parts of the rifle. We have the butt pad, the comb, the butt, the grip where you put your handle, your hand. You have the bolt. You have the rear sight and the front sight, which we're going to talk about in detail. And we have the muzzle, which is the very end of the rifle, the end of that pipe 
that the projectile comes out. All right, next slide, please. Rifles come in different types of action. Remember, action is that area that has the bolt or the trigger area. There's bolt action. And I'm not going to show you a video of these. I just want you to make be aware of it. The other one is a lever action, where that thing underneath the trigger, you have to pull it down and back and it ejects an old bullet and loads a new bullet. There's a semi-automatic weapon, which are gas operated and part of the gas from the bullet that you shoot activates the action and ejects the old cartridge and inserts a new bullet. And then there's another one called the falling block, which is not offered too much. It's much like the lever action. Three safety rules. This is on page eight, option B, question B. The three safety rules that we're gonna to try to drill into your head when you're shooting. Just a second. First rule is always treat a gun as if it was loaded. Whether it's loaded or not, that's the way you treat it. You keep the barrel pointed in a safe direction. And a safe direction either means up in the air or down at the ground. You don't use, you don't hold the weapon where you're swinging it around, pointing at people. You need to be aware of where that muzzle, the end of the rifle is pointed. And the last one of the three safety rules is always keep your finger off the trigger unless you're ready to shoot the weapon. So three rules, keep the gun pointed in a safe direction, treat it if, if it was loaded and keep your finger off the trigger. And that will prevent 99% of the accidents. Range commands. This is on page eight, question C. Range commands that you are required to know. And these may vary as we are actually shooting because we'll have two people shooting at a time and there'll be a coach with each one of the shooters. And the coach will tell the shooter exactly what they want them to do. The commands listed in the requirement, a relay to the firing line. That means you go up and sit down in your chair. Is the line ready? Load, ready on the firing line. Commence firing, which means start firing. And then after you're finished firing, the range officer determines you're finished firing, the command will be cease fire. A ceasefire can be used at any time if there's a safety violation seen, and then you lay your weapon down so that we can correct the problem. Next slide, please. The scout marksman's code always follows the rules of firearm safety. We talked about those three. Accepts the responsibility that goes with the use and possession of firearms follows the laws that govern the use and possession of firearms in his community, practices wildlife conversation, conservation, follows the spirit and letter of the game laws. And the last one, I can't read off my slide. Next slide. Why is gun safety important? 
right, this video lasts about five minutes. We're only going to watch two minutes of it so that when you guys are shooting, you don't end up looking like these knuckleheads on the range. It's going to last. So forgive me. Okay, we're not going to play all the video for you. You get the idea. We don't want you to get hurt. We don't want you to do something stupid when you're on the range. All right, the three things that we talked about, gun safety, are on this slide. Again, those are on, the question is on page eight, option B, section, excuse me, question B. And the three things are, keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. Keep the weapon pointed in a safe direction. And who can tell me the third one? If you can tell me the, oh, go ahead. Keep hands off the trigger. That's correct. Next slide, please. Storage safety. You shouldn't have your weapon out sticking in a corner beside your desk. You should have your weapon locked up in a safe where people don't have access to it, especially your younger brothers and sisters who may not be careful or may not do the damage that it can do. So if you own weapons, lock them up and don't store them loaded. Next slide. All right, this goes along with the other rules that we had about getting permission to buy a weapon. And this is one of the questions on your workbook, page 10, letter J. Some of the things that you're going to consider when you're purchasing a firearm, whether it be new or used, is what brand do you are you going to get? First of all, you would determine what kind of shooting are you going to do? Are you going to do skeet shooting? Are you going to be doing pistol shooting? And there's different types of pistol shooting, whether you're shooting at a round paper target or if you're shooting at metal targets that fall down. So you're going to need to determine if you want a rifle or a pistol. Then when you've narrowed it down to one of those, you're going to use the fact of what type of shooting you're doing, what caliber, and the caliber is the size of the bullet that it uses, what accessories are you going to need? For example, safety glasses, earmuffs. You may need some other protection. What kind of warranty does it have? For instance, if it breaks the first week you buy it, is the company that you bought it for going to fix it? Last but not least, how do I get a license to own and possess a firearm? And we already talked about those requirements a few slides ago. Next slide, please. All right, we're gonna talk about rifle shooting fundamentals. One of them is determining which shoulder you're gonna use, the shooting position that you're gonna use, 
and the position of the rifle. And let me talk about these just a little bit. When you determine the shoulder, you're gonna to need to determine whether you're right-eyed or right, excuse me, right-eyed or left-eyed. You're going to need to shoot on the shoulder that you have eye dominance. And there's a video in here that will show you how to determine that. And also we'll be checking it when you actually fire so that you're using the right side of your body, whether it be right or left to shoulder the weapon. Okay, just a reminder, again, the shooting positions, you're only gonna be firing from a bench off a table. All right, let's go to the next slide. This is determining your eye dominance. Let's watch this quick video. Eye dominance is an important concept to understand and also understand how it applies to and will affect your pistol shooting. So eye dominance is a concept that we actually have a dominant eye, either our right eye or our left eye. Some people don't have a dominant eye, but almost everybody does. So let's talk about how you determine which eye is your dominant eye. A simple test is if you take your pointer finger and place it over an object. Now, go ahead and close your left eye. Now, if your finger is on the object that you have your finger over, that means your right eye dominant. To confirm, keeping your finger on that same object if you close your right eye, you'll see your finger actually shifts off of what your finger is pointing at. Now, I'm right-handed, and so I will want to shoot with my right hand. Now, and I'm also right-eye dominant, so if you happen to be right-handed and right-eye dominant, or left-handed and left-eye dominant, then things are going to be easy for you. Now, in the event that you're right-handed, but you're left-eye dominant, here's where things can get a little interesting for you, or if you happen to be vice versa. So, typically speaking, when you're aiming a pistol, for beginners, I recommend keeping your non-dominant eye closed, so keeping your right eye open. And so, if you are cross-dominant, your choices are, you know, keep your left eye open and you can simply shift your head or another option is you would actually move the gun over in front of your left eye now if you happen to be cross dominant you can try shooting with your non-dominant eye so for example if you're right-handed and your left eye dominant you can try closing your left eye and still shooting with your right eye or you can try switching it up Ultimately, you should try different ways, and at the end of the day, whatever is most comfortable for you is what you should stick with. So now that you understand eye dominance and how to determine your dominant eye and how it applies to your pistol marksmanship, you can head off to the range of practice. And always remember that firearm safety begins with you. <laughs> We'll be watching several videos with the guy that was just in that last video. He's a very famous shooter in the States. The other thing I'd like, you guys are gonna be shooting a rifle. The principles of shooting a rifle and shooting a pistol, for example, the sight picture, squeezing the trigger, et cetera, eye dominance, those are all the same, whether you're gonna be shooting a rifle or a pistol. Getting them position is going to vary but many of the things are the same things in the principles. All right, the next video talks about the different positions. Pay particular attention to the bench example. Stance, grip, shooting positions, all important fundamentals for the beginning rifle shooter. I'm Chris Chang, History Channel's Top Shot Season 4 Champion and Professional Marksman for Bass Pro Shops. In this video, we're going to talk about two common shooting positions, standing and seated shooting. 
we're also going to go over the proper stance and grip for each. So let's start with standing. Now, this is the direction I'm shooting in. And so we're going to get into what's called the weaver stance. So starting with my feet, I'm going to take my right foot and come back 45 degrees. So I'm basically what's called belated toward the target. I'm going to put a slight bend in my knees and I'm going to lean forward into the target. Now, the reason for that forward lean is we've got all this recoil that's going to be coming along this axis, all this energy. And so it's going to be coming back at me. And if I'm not leaning forward, I can actually get bumped back. So a nice forward lean will make sure to keep my whole baseline steady. So for grip, pretty simple. On this pistol grip, I'm going to make sure my finger's off the trigger since I'm not ready to shoot. With my left hand, I can place it up here on the front, in the middle, or up here close to the magazine. It's really shooter's preference. I like to have my hand up front, but the main idea is with your left hand, you want to be pulling that gun into your shoulder and making sure you have solid contact with the buttstock and your shoulder. Now, here's what's going to happen if you don't have that good contact and if there's a space. When you shoot, you're going to get hit and hit and hit and you're going to get driven back, and we want to make sure we're staying stable and on target. So I'm going to go ahead and load around. Come on target. Nice bend in the knees. Leaning forward. Left hand pulling into my shoulder. I'm going to turn my safety off. Now finger on the trigger. I'm going to do a nice slow squeeze. Break one shot. Finger off the trigger safety on. So that is the standing stance. Now let's talk about seated shooting. Let me get my chair here. All right, so many of you are going to be shooting in a range where you're going to have a table and a bench. And so very similar to standing, we want to make sure that we have a stable platform. Starting again with my feet, I've got my feet firmly and flatly placed on the ground. Now coming up, I'm going to make sure that I have my buttstock touching my shoulder here. I've got a support here. I've got a milk crate, which you can use really whatever you want. Could be a, uh, a tire uh, or it could be a range bag. Now, here's a word to the wise. If you're going to use a range bag or really whatever you end up choosing, make sure that the muzzle end, and the muzzle is the end of your rifle, make sure that it's extended beyond whatever you're resting your rifle on. Now here's why. That muzzle brake is directing hot gases with every shot. So if I had my range bag underneath the muzzle, my range bag might get destroyed by all those hot gases. All right, so now that I have a stable shooting platform, I've got my milk brake here. I'm gonna fire a shot, check, make sure I have contact with my shoulder as a butt stop. My feet are firmly placed on the ground. I'm going to hold my rifle to the crate here. Safety off. Put my reticle on target. Trigger finger on. Nice slow squeeze. Break the shot. Safety on. Let me go ahead and unload. Magazine out. All right, bolt back. All right, so as you saw in both the standing position and the seated position, when I shot the rifle, my body stayed pretty stable. I didn't get kicked back. And that's because I was leaning into the gun and then also with my left hand pulling into my shoulder. So now that you have an understanding of these two common shooting positions and the proper stance and grip, head to the range and practice. If you're looking for a place to shoot, check out wheretoshoot.org. And remember, firearm safety, begins with you. All right, the next video is how you shoulder the rifle. And some of you will make the mistake when you hear shooting, or you may be small, where it's difficult to get the rifle butt into your shoulder. Let's watch the, the video of shouldering the rifle, which is very important. Two common 
questions I receive amongst beginning rifle shooters are, do I shoot with one eye or both eyes open? And which shoulder do I shoulder the rifle on? So to tackle that first question, one eye or two eyes open, short answer is it depends. For a beginner who's just sitting at the static line and shooting at a paper target, I'd recommend trying shooting with one eye open first. And if you're getting into action shooting, that's when shooting with both eyes open is typically more handy. But start off with one eye open, and you can also try shooting with both eyes open, see which way works for you. Now, which side do you shoulder the rifle on? This depends on your eye dominance. And in a previous video, I talked about how to establish eye dominance. But so, for example, if you're right eye dominant, textbook says that you are supposed to shoulder your rifle on your right shoulder. If you're left eye dominant, you're supposed to switch and shoot with your left shoulder. Now, a complication arises where, let's say you're left eye dominant, but you're right handed, and this is called cross dominance. And you basically have two choices. You can either shoot left handed and just aim with your left eye, or you can shoot right handed where you have the gun shouldered on your right shoulder but then close your left eye so you're only looking through the scope with your right eye so hopefully the answers to those two questions will help you become a better beginning rifle shooter and remember that firearm safety depends on you when we determine which eye you have that's dominant We'll help you get in position and we'll have eye patch available if you have a problem closing one eye. So don't worry about that. All right, this is your workbook, page nine, question E. Five fundamentals of firing a shot. Aiming, breath control, hold control, trigger control, and follow through. Five find fundamentals of firing a shot. I'm gonna go to the next slide. So if you didn't write these down, you're gonna have to come back and look. There's an easy way to remember those five fi fundamentals. The word brass, breathe, relax, aim, stop, and squeeze. You can use either one of these for the answer to the question on the last page. Brass, breathe, relax, aim, stop, and squeeze. Next slide. The different types of sights on your rifle. Telescopic sight, which magnifies it. You look through glass, this is the one you see snipers on TV with. Iron open sights is what you'll be using when you come here to shoot. And iron closed apertures, which are round and, and close in on the front sight and rear sight. So open sights is the ones you'll be using when you shoot. Next slide. Aiming and sighting, which is one of those five fundamentals. Let's go ahead and watch this. Welcome back to Aragon Academy. In this episode, we'll show you how to use rifle sights. Sighting is one of the most important things you do when shooting. So it's essential you know how to use these sights properly. So many people use scopes. Some shooters never even try out the open sights on their air rifle, but open sights can be very accurate too. Come on, let's see how they work. So there are two parts to a rifle sight. The front sight. And the rear sight. Let's take a look at the front sight first. There are several different types of front sights. We're looking at the simplest and one of the most precise types of front sights, the square post. It 
It's called that because of how it appears to the shooter when he sees it through the rear sight. See how the front post becomes squared off when seen from the rear? That's how you'll see it when you look through the rear sight. To sight the rifle, look through the notch in the rear sight and position the top of the front sight level. Okay, I'm going to pause this in two places during this video. It's important that you get the front sight and the rear sight aligned. And you'll notice there's equal amount of daylight on each side of that front sight when you have the correct sight picture. If you have that front sight too high or too low, you're not going to shoot. You're not going to hit what you think you're shooting at. Let's continue the video. With the top of the rear sight. It's important to have an equal amount of light on either side of the front post. Even a small error will throw the pellet way off target. It's also important that the top of both sights appears to be level. Otherwise, the elevation of the shot will be way off. The pellet will go to the top center of where the front post appears on your target. If your sights are not correctly adjusted, you may shoot a very good group of shots, but that group may not be where you intended it to be on your target. To fix that, adjust the sights if you can. There are also some things you can do with non-adjustable sights to get on target. But we'll cover that in another episode. Thanks for watching Air Gun Academy. Stay tuned for another great lesson from Pyramid Air. All right. <clears throat> We're going to talk about what your sight picture looks like because it's very important so that you can hit what you're aiming at. There's two different ways to hold the sights on your target. The one on the left is called the six o'clock hold. It means that you're aiming at six o'clock, if that was a clock, that round circle, you're aiming at the six o'clock point. You're setting the circle right on top of the front sight. On the right side is a center hold. Now you may need to use a variation of these if the rifle is not hitting exactly where you're aiming. And we'll make sure that the rifles are hitting where they're being aimed before you get here. So that won't be an excuse for you. But these two pictures are what it's gonna look like when you sight the rifle. You'll notice that the target is blurry. And that is because you put your focus on the front sight. Focus on the front sight. Next slide, please. All right, here's what it's going to look like when you're looking down the sights at the target. The one that is correct is on the right-hand side. Now again, you could have a center hold and aim at the center of the target, or you can have the six o'clock hold. And you'll notice he's focused on the front sight, which is why the target is blurry. Next slide, please. Does anyone need to take a break or oh, we've got about, well, let's go ahead and take a five minute break yeah. and we'll come back. We've probably got about 15 to 20 minutes left. I don't want anybody to pee their pants. So it's 9.49 now. Let's call it a six minute break. I want everybody back online at 9.55, okay? 9.55, be back here with your camera on.
Okay, one more minute and we'll start. Everyone put your camera back on. Philip. Philip and Gab, put your camera back on. All right, breath control. You can't shoot and breathe at the same time. The video is going to explain to you how you inhale. The, the technique I use is I inhale and exhale about twice. And then I take a deep breath and I let half of that breath out while I'm getting a good sight picture and applying a squeeze to the trigger. You'll find out there's different types of breath control, but all of them, you're going to exhale most of the breath before you squeeze the trigger to shoot. Let's watch the video on breath control. So what breathing control is, it's about combining trigger squeeze with your breathing. So when you inhale, oftentimes your chest is rising up and therefore all that movement is going to translate into your shoulders, your arms, your hands. And so the gun is probably going to lift up as you inhale and maybe even drop a little bit as you exhale. So with breathing control, you want to make sure that you are continually breathing when you're shooting, because when we stop breathing, one of the first things that goes is our eyesight. And so when you're shooting, you obviously want to be able to see what you're shooting at. So go to empty gun, go ahead and go to close up here. So when you have your gun on target, you're going to take a deep breath. And when you start exhaling, fingers on the trigger, as you're exhaling, you're applying pressure to that trigger. Now, what you're waiting for is for you to almost get out of breath. And you want to time it so that when you're at the trough of your breath, you're almost at the peak of your trigger squeeze. So as you're exhaling, you're exhaling, and you're increasing your trigger squeeze pressure. Once I've stopped breathing, break the shot because at the bottom or trough of your breath, your body is going to be the most still and the most stable. Combining breathing control and trigger control is a key fundamental marksmanship skill that you can develop through practice. And when you're at the range practicing, always remember that firearm safety Okay, hold control. You heard him mention it a minute ago when he was talking about breath control. It means keeping the sights aligned on the target while you're not moving. And this will get better as you practice. You can practice at home by dry firing if you have a weapon. Let's look at the next slide. Trigger control. Remember, you're going to be applying pressure to the trigger at the same time that you're doing your breath control. In fact, you're going to be doing these fundamentals all at the same time. And for a new shooter, it gets a little bit confusing. Let's look at how you control the trigger and the squeeze. concept to learn is proper trigger finger location. 
So when you put your trigger finger on the trigger, the proper location is about one third out from your first knuckle. So that would be right about here. Now, the reason why this is a good spot for your trigger finger to rest on the trigger is because it's a flat part of your finger. And what we're trying to do is have a nice smooth rearward motion of the trigger. Now, why this is important is because if your finger is not in the proper location, it's going to greatly affect your accuracy. Now, let me show you with the unloaded firearm. Let me go ahead and close the slide. Now, let me show you what happens if we have too much trigger finger on the trigger. So this would be too much. See how my first knuckle is overextended. Now, the problem with this is I'm going to have a tendency to drop the muzzle of the barrel every time I shoot. So I have too much finger, or oftentimes you can be pulling your shots down and to the right. Alternatively, here's what too little trigger finger looks like on the trigger and see how it's on the outside of the trigger. And so this can actually result in pushing your shots off to the left. So proper trigger finger placement is right at that point where it's about one third out from that first knuckle. And finally, the last concept to review is that straight and smooth pull to the rear of the gun. We want that trigger finger to be coming straight back Let's take a look. All right, nice smooth trigger press to the rear. Again, we don't want to have pressure coming from the right or too much pressure coming from the left. One of the single most important things you can do to build your marksmanship skills is something called dry firing. Now, what dry firing is, is it means that you're shooting your gun, but without any ammunition inside the gun or even in the vicinity of where you're practicing. So you can dry fire at home or at the range. And the benefits here is that since you're not shooting any ammo, you get to save money and you can also do high repetitions during your practice sessions. So if you're going to dry fire at home or at the range or elsewhere, the first thing to make sure is that you have an unloaded gun by confirming that there's nothing in the chamber and you have an empty magazine. Secondly, you want to make sure that you have all ammunition in a completely separate room. So there is just no chance that a live round will make it into your gun. Now, once you're ready to start dry firing, go ahead and close your slide. And as always, even with an unloaded firearm, you still want to follow all the four rules of safe gun handling. So if I come up, I'm going to align my sights, get a good sight picture, front sight focus, bring my trigger finger on, nice slow squeeze to the rear. All right, and so there I heard the click. Now notice that I trapped the trigger. And now to reset the trigger, I'm just going to go ahead and pull back on the slide just a little bit. I'm going to let pressure off on my trigger finger until I hear a click. All right, and that's the reset point. Notice my finger is still on the trigger. And then I can go ahead, nice smooth squeeze back, front side focus. All right. So dry firing is something that you'll want to do literally thousands and thousands of times. When I was training for Top Shot, I must have dry fired guns at least 10,000 times over the course of five months. And it's one of the most simple, cost effective ways to enhance your marksmanship and become a better pistol shooter. So you can go out and start your dry fire practice today. And remember, while doing so, that firearm safety begins with you. All right, the next video is about follow through or breaking the shot. Just like when you play basketball and you take a shot with the ball, you don't just run away when you the ball leaves your hand. You follow through with your body. When you're shooting a rifle or a pistol, the follow through is you've got a good sight picture, 
You're using your breath control. You're squeezing the trigger. When you've got a good picture of the sight, the weapon will go off. And you'll maintain that same position. You won't pop your head up to look where the round hit the target, or you won't move. You'll stay in that position for one or two seconds until the projectile, which in this case is a BB, leaves the end of the barrel. Let's look at what follow through looks like. Okay, guys, quickly, rifle shooting is a precision sport. It includes balance, support, natural point of aim, and we'll talk about that when you actually get here. You want to be comfortable when you're shooting, and you want to use consistency. If you're hitting the target correctly, then you need to think about how your body is and what you're doing and copy that each time that you shoot. Consistency. Next slide. Firing your first shots. That's what it's gonna look like when you're shooting. You're going to be seated in a chair with a support, excuse me, under the rifle. And we'll use those fundamentals that we just talked about. Next slide. 
Here is a picture of Cub Scouts shooting to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. Next slide. The instructor in the video talked about dry firing and live firing. You probably don't have a weapon so that you can practice dry firing, which is shooting with no bullets, just so that you can practice. And you'll do your live firing when we shoot here. Next slide. <laughs> Sight adjustment. The sights will already be adjusted on your rifle when you get here so that you won't need to adjust them. We'll already know where the rifle is shooting. Next slide. Shooting etiquette. Respect the property. This is when you're out hunting or some other place other than home. Respect the property that you're using to shoot sportsmanship and sportsmanship will be a factor when you're shooting here be polite and don't tease the other shooters be quiet when you're shooting act responsibly and obey the range commands <clears throat> all right when you come here to shoot you're going to be firing 40 shots this is what the target looks like and there's a 10 peso coin on top of the target to give you an idea of how big the black area is. You're going to be firing for 40 shots. The first 15 shots that you shoot, you're gonna put a target up. You're gonna fire three shots into each target so that you can see where the weapon is shooting and if you need to adjust your point of aim so that you're hitting the middle instead of some other place, you'll have a chance to practice and see how the gun is shooting. Then you'll put up a new target and you'll shoot five shots in each one of those targets. And that's the one we'll use to score to see if you fully qualify for your shooting rifle shooting merit badge. Now, 40 shots, it'll take about a minute per shot. So it's going to take about an hour to shoot two shooters. We'll have two shooters firing at the same time, which will be starting shooting at eight in the morning. We'll finish at noon. So we'll be able to do eight shooters on one Saturday. Right now, we have it scheduled on two different Saturdays. Next slide. The targets are at 15 feet, which seems pretty close. But when you start firing, you realize it seems like a mile away. We just talked about your three shots practice in each target and then five shots in each one of the five targets to qualify. Next slide. All right, we talked about your time on the range. It'd be approximately 45 minutes or so. Now, what we're gonna do is you guys are going to finish this workbook and you're gonna submit it to me. So for example, right now, the first time we're gonna shoot it's 14 August at eight o'clock in the morning. There'll be two people that will shoot. You'll get to my house about 7.45 and at eight o'clock, those two shooters will start shooting. At nine o'clock, now at nine o'clock when those two shooters finish shooting, you can go home. And there'll be two new shooters that arrive at about 8.45. And at nine o'clock, those two shooters will start shooting their 40 rounds. And it will take time because you'll forget what you saw in this video. And we'll have to go over eye dominance and trigger squeeze and all of that. Those two shooters will finish about 10 o'clock and they can go home. And the reason for this 
is we don't want a lot of people standing around. We don't want to have a COVID incident. And again, I'd like to remind you that these days of 14 and 21 August may change because of the severity of the lockdown that we're getting ready to go through. We may not be able to get together to shoot on those days. But for you to get scheduled, you've got to submit your workbook completed, six pages. Next slide. All right, do I have any questions? If you have a question, turn your microphone on and ask me. I'm sure. Yes. Remember you told us the place that we can shoot the like the firing range range where we can shoot the real guns. Yes. What is that place called again? I want to go there. It's called the Mountain View uh, firing range. You can look it up on Facebook. They have a Facebook page. It's a little bit expensive. They offer rifles or pistols to shoot. If we were actually meeting, we would probably take that, do that as a field trip, but we can't do that right now. Mountain View shooting range. Are there any more questions? All right. So fill out your workbooks, submit those to me, either scan them or take a picture of them. As soon as I get your workbook, I will schedule you one of the slots for shooting. We're only going to do it on two Saturdays. Again, a reminder, those dates might change depending on the lockdown. And we have slots for 16 people. And right now we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. We've got 14 people that have attended this safety meeting today. So I'm expecting 14 copies of the workbook to come to me. If you don't submit the workbook, you won't shoot. Any more questions? All right, we're gonna stop the video now.